Hi, everybody. Charles from GMAT Ninja here. Welcome to our starter kit for Quant, episode number three for GMAT Focus. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about nasty arithmetic, how to make it less painful. Now, this video isn't really going to be about how to get more questions right. Not exactly. It's going to be questions that a lot of you are getting right. We, we set up a little mini quiz for those people who registered for this live session. And people did pretty good on it, but the issue with a lot of these questions is they can take you a really, really long time. And in general, over the course of your, your quant section, data insights a little bit as well, quant section, 21 questions, 45 minutes. If you're doing more calculations than you need to mess your calculations, running yourself into dead ends is going to cause you a lot of trouble, waste a lot of time, get squirrely, make more careless errors. More calculations means more careless errors. On an adaptive test like the GMAT, that is the kiss of death. So our focus today is going to be on flexibility using a whole bunch of different tools to take nasty arithmetic problems or even fairly simple ones that have multiple solution paths make them easier on you. Typical mid-level GMAT question might be six different ways to solve it. We want you to find the best ways that are going to save you the most time, lead to the least pain. All right, who this video is for and who it is for not, not for. There we go. I'm speaking well. Um, by the way, all these are filmed live, no snack breaks. So if I say dumb stuff, it's going to be on the internet forever. So this video is designed for people who are fairly new to GMAT quant, struggling a little bit. So if you're scoring in maybe the high 60s, certainly in the 70s, maybe the low 80s, this video is for you. If you're way up at the end of the upper end of the score scale already, scoring well into the 80s, trying to get that 90 on quant, this is not your video. Maybe you'll learn something here or there that's going to make it a little bit more, a little bit quicker. But for the most part, if you're already at that level, you're not going to struggle with most of what we're going to do here. This is uh, designed for people who are kind of somewhere in the middle, would like to get a little bit more effective, a little bit more efficient in doing arithmetic on the GMAT. Okay, in general here in these videos on the Quant Starter Kit, uh, we are including data sufficiency. This particular one, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Why? Well, there's not a lot of nasty arithmetic and data sufficiency on the GMAT focus, data sufficiency is now part of the data insights section. And generally it's much more conceptual. You're not gonna do a ton of arithmetic there. So everything we're gonna do today is problem solving, but if you're watching other videos in this series, you are gonna see some data sufficiency. All right, here's what we're gonna do today. So I wanna make the GMAT quant a little bit less painful for you. That's my big goal. Some of the tools you're gonna use, I want you to be really, really flexible. And I know I'm a broken record on that. You hear it in every video I do on quant, be flexible, be flexible. It notice that they don't call the section math. This isn't a test of how much you were paying attention in 10th grade math class. Yes, you're going to need those basics. You need to be able to do algebra, arithmetic, percents, and so on. But it's called quantitative reasoning. And the reason for that is they're trying to test your ability to look at a, a problem and find the best way through it, solve something that's a little bit like a puzzle. So flexibility is absolutely crucial. Um, long, long time ago, actually apprenticed as a carpenter. I was absolutely heinous at it. My uh, The guy I was training with, who was an amazing guy, if you're ever in Minneapolis, St. Paul, need a carpenter, send me an email. I'll refer you to an awesome dude. He's still doing it up there. But uh, he would always say, hey, Charles, measure twice, cut once. I still sucked at all of it. GMAT, yeah, you're not measuring exactly, but I, I want you to read twice every single time. And I want you to take a breath and go, hey, what are my choices? What are my choices? What are my choices? Think through your options before you just jump in. A lot of these questions that we're going to do today are questions where I've seen students take questions very much like these, barrel into the first solution path that comes to mind, spend four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, bunch of dead ends, tons of arithmetic flying everywhere. I don't want you to do that. Everything we're going to do today can be solved in two minutes, maybe 90 seconds, maybe 30 seconds even, even though these are very GMAT-like questions. Because if you can see the easiest way, good things are going to happen. That's a really high bar to do it in under two minutes. I'm happy if you do it in around two. But you want to fight for those easier ways. And be critical of what you're doing. Think about what you're doing and go, hey, what's my plan here? This is going to suck. Yeah, find a different plan or guess and move on. All right, read twice, calculate once. Estimation, ballparking, those are your friends. If they're not handing out any awards for doing big numbers here. If there's a way to get through a question with, with estimation, by all means, take it. Really silly thing here. Sometimes people forget fractions. I'm going to throw some decimals at you today. I'm not saying fractions are always the best thing to do, but it's a tool that, that a surprising number of test takers aren't thinking about. Pattern recognition, this is going to be a big one. As we get into some of the tougher questions today toward the end of the video, yeah, if you can spot the pattern, I'm going to take some questions that look really, really, really nasty the first time you see them, and they're going to be pretty easy if you can spot the pattern. Now, it's hard to spot the pattern, but we're going to work on that a little bit today. Last thing, strategic laziness. It's a term a friend of mine in high school coined, hey, I try to do the least work I can to get a B in my classes. I'm like, I like that. That's cool. That's how I want you to be on the GMAT. 
so no one's handing out awards for doing 20 lines of arithmetic, 10 lines of arithmetic, big numbers, long division. Those things are not your friend. I want you to be lazy. I want you to think, hey, this path I've got in mind is going to take a lot of work. Be wary of it. I want you to think, hey, wait a minute. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better way and fight for it. That's the mindset I want you to develop today. All right. With that, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to go through six questions today. If we really rifle through them fast, I've got a seventh one that I'm not sure is all that interesting. We'll see. First one, guys, just a warm up. But this is one of those questions that I think really kind of cuts to the heart of how the GMAT can take a really, really simple question, legitimately pretty easy question. And depending on how you're evaluating your options, you either cut through it really, really quickly or you sit there and you do a bunch of work that you don't need to do. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes on this. As always, if you're watching this live, um, I feed off your energy. Let me know what answers you have right away. As soon as you got something, punch it in that chat box so I can see what you're thinking. And if you're struggling, please say that as well. Send me a little emoji, whatever you got in the chat to say, ouch, I'm struggling. I hate you, whatever. Um, helps us make this content better. And as always, if you're enjoying this, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Helps us get this out to other people. All right. Go ahead and hop in here. Give you a minute or two. And again, just to warm up, these will get tougher after this one. All right, pause if you need a little more time. Hopefully you don't on this one. Okay, really, really, really simple question here. Nothing super complicated. As long as you've read the question twice, you're chasing the right thing, looking for the maximum revenue from a single flight, minimum revenue from the single flight, you're going to subtract those two. Not a hard question. Very, very few people miss this sort of thing. But even something this simple, and this is very, very typical of the GMAT, something this simple, you've got choices. The obvious thing to do, what I see students do over and over and over and over again here is they calculate everything. They go, all right, I'm going to multiply these two out, get the answer, multiply these two out, get the answer, multiply these two out, and so on. Is that going to work? Yeah, of course it's going to work. That's totally fine. Nothing wrong with it, except you just don't need to. And my point here is, no matter how simple the question is, arguably, the more simple it is, I want you to go, all right, how can I make this easier on myself? Do I want to calculate anything or everything or do i want to just cut straight to what i need you can just eyeball this and go well hey what's my smallest going to be what's the minimum ticket revenue for a single flight well it's got to be this first one right it's the lowest price it's the smallest number of tickets 
So that's got to be my smallest. Nice, simple numbers there. Now, the thing I'm never going to advocate is rushing through your arithmetic. I advocate doing less of it. Look for opportunities to avoid it. Look for opportunities to make it simpler. Estimate whatever you can do to make it easier on yourself. But if you actually have to do the arithmetic, and we're going to have to here, be careful. Be systematic. Watch your back. Here, nice, simple one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the 4 times 15. That gives me 60. And I don't really need the flight numbers in here. It doesn't really matter up on the board. So I've got 60 for the 4 times 15. Three more zeros. Great. Um, every once in a while, I get somebody picking B there. Don't do that. That's bad. All right. What's the biggest ticket revenue? Well, um, we know it is not that third one. It has a lower price ticket, fewer tickets. Not that one. Which of these two? Well, it's got to be one of the $500 ones and the one with the most tickets. So this is your greatest. And three times five, 15, four zeros on there. And always, every step of the way, everyone, if, if you guys have watched these videos before, you get tired of hearing me say this, watch your back, check every step as you go, ballpark it, do anything you can to verify you got the right thing. The GMAT will knock your head off if you rush through the easy parts, rush through the calculations. Does this seem reasonable? Sure. Nice, easy numbers, 150. Yeah, because two tickets is going to be a grand here, a thousand bucks. So that's going to be 150,000. Seems like the right ballpark. All I got to do now is subtract those two, 150 minus 60. I get 90 and I'm done. All right, my point here. Remarkably few people in the live group said anything at all. I don't know if um, everyone's asleep or uh, was taking longer than they needed to. My point is GMAT's all about choices. That is deliberately 100% how it's designed. Take the opportunities to make your life easier. Even in those small ways, that's going to add up over the course of the test. But don't rush through. That's when they're going to get you. So find ways to do less work very, very carefully. That's how you're going to maximize your score, especially if your quant skills aren't amazing. You don't have to be amazing to score well into the 80s on this test. All right. Next one, going to be a little bit tougher. Going to take a couple minutes.
And as always, if you need a little more time, hit that pause button. Again, for this video, I hope you don't need any more time here. Um, hopefully you can answer these just as fast or faster than I can write them on the board. Okay, all we're trying to do here is order these from least to greatest, find the middle number nice and straightforward. And again, I know a broken record on this, GMAT's all about choices. So you might look at this, I get some people sometimes who say, hey, I'll get the decimal equivalents. That sounds terrible, right? Do you really want to divide 17 by 36? Most people discard that right away. What I do see a lot of is, hey, let's get a least common multiple. Okay, or least common denominator, I should say here. Um, okay, sounds good, right? Because you can look at these guys and go, all right, hey, you know, they got a lot of factors in common. Least common multiple might, or least common denominator might be, well, it's not 36 because 24 doesn't work. So 48, does that work for us? Well, no, not quite. Okay, 72. So we have a least common denominator of 72. We're getting to big numbers. As soon as you feel numbers growing like that, when you think about your options, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. Not saying that numbers should never grow. You're going to do multiplication on this test. That's fine. But that idea of saying, hey, I'm going to calculate, recalculate all five of these, turn them into equivalent fractions with a denominator of 72, that's a ton of work. All those little steps of doing those little bits of multiplication, changing those fractions, not only is it a lot of work, lots of opportunities to make careless errors. Let's see if we can think of something better. I had somebody in the live group, uh, Vamsi, awesome. Um, really appreciate that. You're spot on here. Can I ballpark these? Can I, I don't need to know exactly the values. I just need to be able to figure out, hey, which two are biggest, which two are smallest, which one's in the middle. That's all I need. All right. These are all between zero and one. If, if you're a visual person, maybe you draw yourself a little number line or something. I'm not saying you have to. I know that helps some people. Um, one half here. Now, the thing that I notice, I'm just going to kind of get a feel for these numbers. So there's never any harm in taking an extra 10 seconds, 30 seconds, even a minute, the beginning of a question going, all right, let me get a feel for these. What is this really about? Well, I don't know. I mean, this guy right here is less than a half. It's over here somewhere. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, 17 over 36. Well, 1836 would be a half. So this is also less than a half. It's over here somewhere. Okay, so these are less. The other ones are all more. So what am I trying to do? Really, all I'm trying to do is figure out of these last three, five eighths, seven twelfths, 10 eighteenths, can I figure out which one is smallest? Then I'm done. These two are less than a half. These two are all bigger. If I can find the one that is the smallest of the three bigger, I got the middle number, I'm done. All right, again, you could do a whole bunch of math, make this hard on yourself. Least common denominator of these three, whatever that comes out to be, not that much fun, too much work, too many little calculations. Can I find some other way to benchmark them? The thing I noticed, they're all close to a half, right? Well, four eighths would be a half. So this is one eighth more than a half. Okay. Six twelfths is a half. So seven twelfths is one twelfth more than a half. And same idea here, 10 eighteenths. Well, nine eighteenths is a half. So this one is one eighteenth bigger than a half. So 10 eighteenth has to be my smallest of these three. That's it. Here's my answer. Answer is D in this case, and we're done. And again, can't emphasize it enough. If you start to feel the numbers getting cumbersome, I'm not saying never do calculations. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's not that absolute. If it's the best you can think of, it's all you got, you're racking your brain, trying to think of something better, and you need 90 seconds of calculation, no big deal. Maybe it's worth it. Just be really careful with them. But I just want there to be some wariness, some laziness there where you go, okay, least common denominator. No, thank you. Can I do better? Can I do better? Can I do better? All right. Four more questions to go. I think this next one's a little tougher still. Let's see what you guys think. Again, live group. Love to hear what you have to say. Punch in your answers as you go. Love to get that feedback if you're struggling too.
All right, if you need a little more time, hit the pause button. I, I think it might be healthy to keep keep grappling with whatever method you're doing here. Uh, might help you. So feel free to hit the pause button, and I'll show you the easiest way. Okay. Um, this this type of question is one of my favorites. Again, the problem with one of the problems problems I guess with the GMAT is tons of variety in the questions. I say stuff like that and go, oh yeah, questions like this. What do I mean? These questions that have kind of decimals and fractions mixed together, and they there's tons of different ways to do it, right? You could just calculate the decimals. Hey, I could multiply these guys out, multiply these guys out, do some long division. Woohoo! Sounds great. Going to be a ton of work. You could do fractions here. Maybe that's going to be good. It's actually going to be pretty good here. And I think a lot of the live group, I think, are doing it that way, judging by how long it's taken answers to pop up on the chat. Or you can kind of estimate. I'll go through that in a second. Before we go through how exactly to do this question that I like so much and appreciate kind of the, the different ways you can go about it, a couple of quick things. Again, if you're enjoying this, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. It really helps us a ton. If you like my videos in general, you're out of your mind. Just kidding. I think um, all of the GMAT Ninja playlists here on the GMAT Club YouTube channel are in the video description. So if you want to see some critical reasoning, reading comprehension, data insights, more quant, the time that I did 24 hours straight on live stream live, um, you could watch that too. All that's in the video description. Um, also available always on the GMAT Club YouTube channel. Um, okay, getting back to this thing. Yeah. If your first thought is decimals, probably painful, going to be too much work, also more likely to lead to an error, real pain in the butt, not going to do it. Fractions would be okay here. I think it's kind of set up, so it's not going to be bad at all. But even then, I've got fractions in a fraction. I don't love it. I'm still going to sit there and go, is there anything I can do? And I'm going to at least glance at my answer choices. And sometimes they do me a favor here. Not that often. I think it's one of those things we overblow a little bit sometimes in test prep land where we say, oh, back solve, use those answer choices. It's not that common that they're going to help you, but take a look anyway. Sometimes it leads you somewhere. You can eliminate some stuff really, really easily, or it kind of shows you what the joke is in the question. Here, I noticed right away, I got a couple negatives, zero, and a couple positives. All the numbers are the same. What are they doing? They're inviting me not to calculate. They're inviting me to. Look at all the space between these numbers. They're, they're different by a factor of 10 here factor of 10 here, I can probably figure out whether or not it's zero. I can figure out whether it's negative or positive. They're inviting me to estimate. Let's see if that gets us anywhere. All right. Um, so first thing, this whole thing right here, I get a negative number, roughly what? I don't know, negative three and a half times 0.4. We're going to cut it in half. It's still going to be negative. So it's going to be less than negative two, or I guess a little more than negative two. The absolute value will be less than two. So we get what, like negative 1.5, roughly, roughly, roughly-ish? What about over here? 1.6 multiplied by this thing that is almost 1, and we're subtracting it. So I'm subtracting another, I'm going to go with 1.5-ish. So minus another 1.5-ish here. Okay, one of these two is my answers. I know it's not these guys. I know I got a negative number. So negative 3-ish. Divided by 35, well, 3 over 30 is a tenth. This is less than a tenth, again, but negative. This is awfully close to 1. I want something that's close to a tenth, but negative. Done. B. No pain. Not bad at all. Again, this is a skill you develop over time. What I want you to do, you're sitting there pounding through questions in the official guide. You're doing those GMAT club tests. You're on the forum quizzes. You're doing tests from Manhattan Prep, wherever you want. Um, I really want you to concentrate on K. I just did a lot of math there. I did a lot of arithmetic. Could I have avoided it? Could I have avoided it? Is there an easier way? Is there an easier way? I just want that mindset. You build that mindset, good things will happen. You're never going to find the easiest way every single time. But if you can find it 50, 60, 70% of the time, really good things are going to happen. All right. Let's hit the next one. And Vamsi, again, apologies for any mispronunciations. Thank, thank you so much for all this, because I, I think what you're experiencing there is really, really common. I think what we're conditioned to do growing up is, yeah, do a bunch of calculations. And if you can, why not? Um, but the GMAT's asking you for a different mindset here. All right, I'm going to shut my trap. Go ahead and take a minute or two.
and live group if you're struggling and it's making you want to poke your eyes out please let us know that too it's it's good to see if you're struggling too All right, hit the pause button if you need a little more time. Um, Mario, uh, take a stand, man. You keep doing one or two of them. Um, take a stand, take your best guess. Um, and I appreciate all the comments you've been making here. Um, really good question coming in. Um, and again, as always, apologies for mispronunciations, um, Richaraj. Um, how can you avoid doing silly mistakes? Yeah, I, I love that question. Um, and again, apologies for anybody that's watched a bunch of my videos. I, I harp on this a lot in some of the videos. Um, always, always read twice. Always plot your path forward before you do anything. Always check your steps as you go. The easier the step, the more important it is. It is so absolutely crucial to make sure that you're checking your steps. So when I do something as simple as, what, what did we have earlier? We read something like, what was it? 400 times 150. And it's like, okay, well, 60 and three zeros on it, right? I'm going to triple check it. It doesn't take me very long to go, hey, is this the right ballpark? Is this is this anywhere near? Can I look at it from a different direction and see if I'm anywhere close to it? Yeah, okay. Well, this is two of these is going to be not quite a thousand bucks. So 75 times that would be less than 70,000. Yeah, cool. Good. Anything you can do to check those steps. I'm not saying redo them, but check them. And then when you're done, read your question one more time. Why? People go, oh, I'm reading the question too much. I burn valuable seconds. Yeah, you don't want to answer the wrong questions. And you might be sitting here going, I would never do that. Yeah, let me watch you do 100 problems. Um, you're going to do it probably if, if you haven't built that habit already of, of checking, double checking at the end. Because you get questions where they ask you for x squared you solved for x or they ask you for the wholesale price you got the retail price so the habit of mind and i i talk about this a lot in some of my other videos some of the the ones with very general titles we have one called something like how to approach gmat quant that i've done over on the the gmat ninja channel i basically just talk about hey every time i want you to do four steps read twice no matter what you don't want to skip a little modifier watch your plot your path forward talking about that a lot in this video step three always check your steps as you go step four read one more time and whatever you do, don't get stuck. You spend seven minutes on one question, you're going to start rushing, then the wheels come off. So a lot of this is just habits you build over time. Um, way easier said than done. I think every time I kind of talk about, hey, read twice. And you know, I know people are rolling their eyes watching this at home. I'm rolling my eyes because I say it so often. And it's really, it's remarkably hard to do every single time. It's so hard to be consistent. So um, Rich Raj, great question. Really appreciate it. Um, all right. Another great comment here. Um, and again, apologies for mispronunciations, Walia. Um, yes, you're nailing it. So I would argue that here for this question, three different ways to go about it. You could FOIL it. Um, and what I mean by FOIL, um, that that's the acronym used in some parts of the world for when you have, let's say, two of two terms like this, first, outer, inner, last. If you're not familiar, don't worry about it. Um, different ways to do that. Um, different ways people think about it depending on how they were taught. The way we're taught in the United States, take the first one, multiply those out, take the outer ones. So I get, uh, boy, this is not how I would do this, and it's really hard for me to do it. Outer, inner, multiply that pair together, plus a half, uh, and then multiply these two together, and I get plus a sixth. And I am really not a happy person right now because I'm doing a ton of work. And by the way, I've got to keep doing it. This is awful. Um, so I've seen people go down that road without thinking, and they realize the dead end after doing what I just did. Um, that's one thing I see people do is they kind of start doing it sort of algebraically because it looks like the sort of thing you see in algebra. It looks like this sort of thing that we might might just multiply out. Awful here, really painful. Think before you act. That's what I mean by FOIL. Um, decimals, I, I suppose you could say, oh, 1.5 times 1.33. Now we've got repeating things, terrible. And um, well, Leah, yeah, spot on. The the best way to go about this is take a breath, see if you can spot the pattern. Those will emerge a lot. A lot of what the GMAT is when we talk about what is quantitative reasoning, 
Yeah, it's about flexibility. It's about puzzle solving. A lot of the time it's about pattern recognition, huge theme. Um, as the questions get tougher and tougher, a lot of the really hard number properties questions, for example, it's all about pattern spotting. Really, really good thing for you to develop. And that's what we're going after on this one. So uh, you can start exploring a little bit and go, well, hey, that's three halves. I, I, again, I could convert it to a decimal, no fun. Uh, this is four thirds. Oh, wait a minute. One plus a fourth is going to be five fourths. And now I'm starting to notice things are going to cancel out on me. Oh, that's nice. Six fifths, seven sixths. And now we're in business. We just have seven halves. And that's going to be C. Very, very typical GMAT. Again, not a super hard question from sort of a, is it hard for people to get it right? Is it rated a difficult question? Not necessarily. But again, uh, you're going to have a much better time on this test if you're really fighting for those opportunities to make it easier on yourself, spotting those patterns. Got two more questions today. The last one I'm going to do is, uh, is this is probably the one really, really tough question, I would argue, in the video. You guys might disagree. If you do, fantastic. I hope you find it easy after all of the priming I'm doing. It's going to be 100% about spotting the pattern. Very, very typical as you get into those upper level questions. Okay. One more. The one big bad word problem in the video uh, involves food. My favorite thing in the world. Besides maybe my kids, maybe. All right, I'll shut up now before I uh, get in trouble. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Great to see you.
Okay, seeing lots of pain coming from the live group. Um, if you're watching this not live, hit that pause button if you need more time. Um, again, a lot of the time on these, I, I think it can be really good to grapple with it. Feel the pain of a of a inefficient solution pass. So go ahead and finish up if you need to, doing what you're doing, and then come on back and join us. Okay. Um, great classic GMAT style word problem. Uh, I got a whole bunch except mine has food because that's the only thing I can think about. All right, 1,200 croissants, 1,440 scones. Every baker can make a croissant in 10 minutes, 20 minutes to make a scone. How many bakers do we need to finish this gigantic order of baked goods on an eight-hour shift? All right, what I typically see here um, is, and actually that's a, that's a really good clarification here, um, and, and apologies for not making this um, clear enough. Yeah, they can only do one thing at a time, but a baker could mix and match these within a shift, I suppose. Um, so concentrating on one task at a time. So assume that the baker is only making a croissant, takes them 10 minutes, only making a scone, takes them 20. So apologies that that wasn't clear here. And um, thank, thank you for asking that question. Um, and uh, yeah, just a friendly reminder. Thank, thank you so much. I, I love your comments. Uh, it, it's been tons of fun. You're making me giggle here. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, no calculators on the quant section of the GMAT. You want to go take the GRE? They're going to give you a calculator. Data insights section of the GMAT focus, you can have a calculator quant. Oh, no, no, which is kind of the whole point of all this uh, craziness I'm running through that, yeah, if you need a calculator, you got to find a different way um, because I, I guarantee every GMAT question can be done, every quant question can be done in two minutes or less if you could find the fastest way again much much easier said than done especially as they get harder and harder this one's pretty tough i see a lot of damage on this um as we teach students um and they're doing similar questions it's caused a lot of damage all right a lot of people here first instinct is to say well all right how many minutes do i need to make an entire batch of croissants so i see oh well 1200 croissants times 10 minutes per croissant we've got twelve thousand minutes needed and uh, the the scones, we got 1440 times 20. So that's, well, this is getting bad fast. Uh, this is 28,800 minutes. And then I can add those up. And you see where this is going. This is getting really rough here. You can say the same thing about the individual bakers, right? You say, oh, hey, they have 480 minutes each. So you, you add all this up, you divide it by 480. It's doable. It's going to work. You're going to get the right answer as long as you don't make a careless error. But again, more calculations, bigger numbers, more opportunities to make those score killing careless errors. As soon as you you think of a path and the numbers are getting bigger like this, I just want you to go, is there a better way? Is there a better, can I think of something better? If you can't and you think it's worth it, it's only going to take you 60 seconds, 90 seconds, knock yourself out. That's cool. Let's see if you can do something easier. All right. Nikhil, thank you so much. Awesome to see you. Um, and again, for those who are wondering, well, um, if we get this in the video description too, Abhijit, um, Nikhil and his, um, and his wife, there you go. Thank you. Applied together, got into Michigan, Ross, great story. Um, long time moderator, administrator, friend of GMAT club, um, both of them awesome people. So, uh, please take a look at that video if you're interested and want, want a good, inspiring story. Um, and, uh, yeah, kicking butt now in, uh, real life and done with the GMAT and such an honor to see you here. Thank you so much. All right. Back to the math. Don't do all this pain, please. If you can avoid it. Better. I want numbers to shrink. I want shrinkage. Man in a cold pool. Terrible analogy. I'm fired. All right. Now I'm thinking um, maybe maybe I organize my information a little bit here, make a little chart, something like that. So I've got my croissants here. Let me give myself a little more space. Croissants here, scones here. How many do I need? I need 1,200 here. I need 1,440 here. How much time does it take? Well, these are 10 minutes each. These are 20 minutes each. And now I'm thinking, well, how many can I do in an hour? So if I'm the baker, I'm going, all right, I can do six of these in an hour, right? Per hour, six per hour here, we can do three. So how many hours do we need? Well, now I'm making numbers shrink. 1200, or sorry, 1200 croissants, six per hour, divide those out. We need 200 hours, 1440, a little bit of a messier number, but not horrible. Divide that by three. If you need to do the long division, do the long division. It's a small little thing. Do it carefully. Again, nobody's going to give you a trophy for mental math on this test. People overblow that. Hey, I want to get better at mental math. If you really want to go do something like a little you know, app on your smartphone, something like that, 
go for it. It's not a terrible thing to be good at multiplication, division, basic stuff like that. It's also not that big of a deal. I can go ahead and do the long division here if I need to, divide it out. 3 into 14, I get 4. Into the 240, I get 480 here. And again, I'm always checking, always checking. Three minutes. What are, three seconds, not three minutes. How can I look at this? Make sure it's in the right ballpark. Yeah, 1,500 divided by three gives me 500. I'm in the right ballpark. Life is good. So I need 200 hours to make the croissants. I need 480 hours to make the scones. We got eight-hour shifts. So the number of shifts I need, number of bakers, divide this by eight. 200 divided by eight. If you can look at that and go, boom, it's 25, congratulations. If you can't, that is totally fine. Not going to hurt you that much. Personally, if I get numbers that are a little bit cumbersome, I like to just reduce the fraction. I'm going to divide top and bottom by 2. 100 divided by 4, not going to mess up that step. Really simple. 100 divided by 4, now I got it. I need 25 bakers here. And that 480 divided by 8, nice number here. I get 60. So 60 plus 25, that's 85. Need 85 bakers that's one heck of a kitchen. All right. Last question, guys. Uh, this one, I think, I think, again, difficulties in the eye of the beholder. You might think this is really easy. I think is the toughest of these if you haven't seen this, something very, very similar to it before. But again, I'll give you the hit. Pattern recognition, GMAT really rewards it. Um, and here you go.
And again, if you need a little more time here and you're not watching this live, really encourage you to take the extra time, play with this, see if you can get somewhere. Um, and whenever you're ready, come on back. All right. Um, a couple quick things. Last question in the video here. Uh, if you're enjoying this, as always, I know you get tired of hearing this too. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're charging a, a big fat zero for this. So um, help other people find the, the fun free stuff. Um, hit that like button. Uh, again, this is video three in this series of quant fundamentals, quant starter kit for GMAT focus. We're going to do one more video this coming Wednesday night, Valentine's Day. Uh, so five o'clock Pacific time, February 14th, Wednesday night here in the US Pacific time, eight o'clock Eastern time. Not the sexiest time to be watching a quant video, but if you're enjoying this one, please, please join us. Um, I would love some company for it. I'm sacrificing my marriage to be here teaching uh, ratios and percents. And again, we're going to get into some really fun stuff with it. How to make it easier on yourself, how to translate well, how to streamline it, how to think about it nice and nice, nice and cleanly so you don't waste time. All right. Um, before we finish this one up, there were, a, I think I saw a couple uh, interesting questions from the live group. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much for asking the question. If, if you feel like you need more work on fundamentals, how do you proceed? Great question. Um, th this is one of those things. Like I, I, I get this question a lot, and in in different contexts, GMAT Club on the forum, sometimes during these videos, certainly with our one on one one on one private tutoring students. And what what's hard about this question is that it depends on what level of fundamentals you need, right? And how much time you have, and what your goals are, and all of that. So it, it's a really hard thing to answer. And I wish there was a good one size fits all. Um, over at GMAT Ninja, we're working on developing some basics videos that I, I think will be kind of modular enough, but those are probably about six months away from getting published where it's like, hey, you know, here's a five minute video on this little piece of algebra, or this little piece of arithmetic or this little bit of percents. We're still not there yet. A um, couple ways you can go about it. Um, there are basic things out there. If you want videos on the underlying math itself, you go to something like Khan Academy. Um, the issue with Khan Academy in particular and some of its cousins are, is that yeah, you know, it's just a ton of stuff and and figuring out exactly what which resources are going to help you. It's a tough thing. Um, some companies out there, Manhattan used to publish a book. I, I don't know if it's still in print. I'm sure you can get it used. Um, if they're not, if they don't have it currently in print called Foundations of GMAT Math. Um, if you like learning math from a book, I always thought that was a really good volume. Kaplan had a similar one years ago. I'm sure there's other ones out there. Those are other options. Um, other than that, you know, I've seen people go take a, a college algebra course if they really struggle on some of this stuff. So those are some options. I wish I had a really, really good, clean answer for you. It just depends on what, what level of fundamentals you need. Um, if you feel like what's going on in this video is about the right level, great. There are more videos out there about this level, you know, both on GMAT Club and on our channel that should help you. If you need something even more basic than that, again, you might look to the Manhattan book. Um, you might look over to Khan Academy. And if you really have time, again, you could step back and take something like an algebra course. Um, and I have no idea which one of those might fit you personally, but throwing out ideas, hopefully some of those help. Um, okay, let's get into this thing. Uh, really ugly, a lot of people paralyzed. We're seeing pretty good answers off the live crowd. Um, Mario, I'm, I'm loving I'm loving your participation because I, I think you're, um, you're capturing a lot of the zeitgeist of what goes on in people's heads, and I really appreciate it. I think a lot of people are thinking the things you are. Denominator keeps increasing, make the number smaller. Yes, we want to make numbers smaller, that's right. Um, take a stand, man. Tell me it's a, um, and I have bad news. It is not a, but we'll get to that. Um, but you're close. You're in the right ballpark. And I, I think you're probably doing some good thinking there and I really appreciate it. And again, thank you so much to all the live people doing this. Um, uh, well, again, again, apologies for mispronunciations. Um, this one's on the tougher side. I don't want to stick a number on it, but this is, I, I think if you're sailing through this, you are very, very likely, all else being equal on track to score well into the 80s on the GMAT focus quant section. This is the toughest one in here by a good bit. I'd say well above average. Is it the hardest, hardest thing ever? Maybe not, but it's it's pretty tough, I'd say. Um, okay. Uh, again, 100% about, sp about spotting the pattern here. Your options, you could add up 40 fractions, add and subtract 40 fractions, knock yourself out. Um, or look, you know, if you try messing around with this and you don't have an answer, skip it. Look. GMAT's looking for the level of question at which you get roughly half right, half wrong. Those 21 quant questions in 45 minutes, unless you walk on water and swim on air, you're probably not going to get all 21 right. It's okay. Skip some of them. You control the test. You look at it, you play with it, you do some stuff for a minute or two, walk away. It's all right. That's good. That's you controlling the test. 
Success might look like doing really, really well in 14, 15, 16 questions, something like that. Guessing on the rest, that might be fantastic. Remember, at the end of your section, if you want to go back and change a few, you always can do that. Okay. Um, something like this. Again, once I sort of recognize that I'm looking at this and going at, at first blush, like, well, I don't really see what's happening. I'm just going to try to lay out my information in a way that's going to help me organize my thinking, see if I can spot some sort of pattern, really good example of it. 20 terms. All right. I'm going to start with the first couple. You know, I'm going to go up to 20 here. I, I obviously can't. I could. I'm obviously not in the amount of time I get on the GMAT going to write out all 20 terms, but at least I'm kind of visualizing it and recognizing that that's what's going to be there. Um, and then I want to know, all right, what's, what's this beast? Sorry, that's a minus one over R. Okay. So for that first one, we get one over two minus one over one. Um, to be totally honest here, my temptation, first time I saw some of this was, was on an actual exam for probably 15 years ago, maybe 20. Um, yes, I'm old. Stop judging. Uh, my first instinct is to kind of is to go ahead and subtract this out. Maybe not great. Uh, negative a half. Maybe that's going to be helpful. Maybe it isn't. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So one over two plus one, I get one over three minus one over two. And now I'm already getting a little leery of the subtraction business. Am I, am I happy about it? Negative one sixth. I'm not sure I'm real happy about that. Third term, and let me see if I start spotting something. I better spot something sooner, or else my hand's gonna hurt. One fourth over one uh, minus one third. I'm gonna stop this business because it's not getting me anywhere and it's starting to hurt my brain. But I'm gonna add up all these guys, right? What do I notice? Minus one, there's a half, there's a minus a half, there's a third, there's minus a third. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Everything's going to cancel on me. Typical GMAT looks a lot like a question we did a couple questions ago, number four in this video. Those are gone. Those are going to cancel out. And guess what? That's going to keep repeating on us that you've got this one half here, minus a half, a third, minus a third, a quarter, minus a quarter, and so on. So all I need to do now is just make sure I have my head around what happens at the end here. So one over 20 minus one over 19, one over 21, minus one over 20. So again, I know that all these guys are going to cancel. The one over four, that one over 19 is going to cancel with the previous term. The one over 20 and the minus one over 20 cancel out. What do I have left? I've got a positive one over 21. I've got a negative one over one. And again, I keep saying, again, broken record, don't make those careless errors. They're going to knock your head off for it. Adaptive test, accidental consequence of how they're designed. Don't make the careless errors. Miss all the hard ones you want. Just don't miss the stuff you know how to do. Now that I see what's going on, I'm really going to watch my back here. I'm going to be super, super careful and go, well, all right, well, a lot of ways you could do this. Minus one over one, one over 21 minus 21 over 21. Why not just write it out? It takes me an extra few seconds and that's going to give me minus 20 over 21. And my answer is B, don't rush through this last part. A knowing little bit of arithmetic, sure. You don't want to end up with the wrong sign. We're going to get you for it. All right. That is it for our video on nasty arithmetic. Hopefully this gives you a few different tools up your sleeve. As always, just think about your options. Fight for something that's better than your first idea. Sometimes your first idea is going to be wonderful. Sometimes it's not. But if you can more often than not get the easier way, really, really good things are going to happen to you. All right. That is it for today. If you enjoyed this, uh, we will see you in two days, Wednesday evening, February 14th. We're in 2024 here for the live group. Um, so five o'clock Pacific PM, eight o'clock Eastern time. That's going to be Thursday morning in some parts of the world. Would love, love, love to see a Valentine's day. I might bring chocolate flowers. I don't know. All right. I'm going to shut my mouth now. Thank you everybody for watching and we will see you next time.